today I am going to focus my lecture on design aspects of laterally unsupported beam. In last lecture, we have focused basically on laterally supported beams. Before going to find the difference between laterally unsupported and laterally supported beams, first let us see what are the components in a beam member exist. Basically, there are three components exist. One is compression flange, another is tension flange and then wave. Wave depth is comparatively high compared to its thickness. That is why there is a tendency of buckling of the wave. Now, when the transverse load is coming into picture on the section, if we see the buckling of the section at a particular point, we will see that it is buckling due to compression and due to tension. Means, because of the development of bending moment, in one side it is developing tension, bending stress in tension, in other side it is developing or bending stress in compression. So, when bending stress due to compression is happening, there it works like a column member. So, the section along the depth of depth, it work as a column. Right? So, when it is working as a column, so there is a chance of buckling. Therefore, the permissible stress will not become 165, which we have considered in case of laterally supported beam. Here, permissible stress will become less. Permissible stress in bending sigma machine, which we consider in case of laterally supported beam as 165, will not be work here. Here, that value will be less. So, how it will be calculated and how the sigma BC value depends on other parameters that we will see and then we will design accordingly. As we know three components are there, one is compression flange, tension flange and wave. This three components are there because if we see suppose I section, now there will be three component, right. So, if if this is a tension flange and this is compression flange, now we see that this thickness is too less compared to the depth of the wave, if this is D and if this is thickness of the flange. So, there will be chances of back buckling if we do not make support, right. So, we have to calculate the allowable compressive stress due to bending in a different way. Right? Now, if we see a how lateral buckling affects, if we see say suppose there is a beam in plan, if we see and if suppose say I section is provided like this, I section is provided, then what will happen? So, because of load it will act locally as a compressive member and this will buckle say maybe like this it will buckle right. So, this will buckle like this ok, this is the center line right, this is the original position and so, this is before buckling and this is in the buckling beam means after loading right. Now, if we see the cross section, we will see that this is the I section before buckling, this is before 
and after buckling sorry after buckling say this will become something like this right so this is after this is the plan of the beam right so what we are seeing that because of the concentrated load this will try to buckle this portion will try to buckle so in plan we will see like this right so we have to find out the chances of buckling how much it may happen means what are the parameters depends on buckling and how we can restrict and because of buckling what will be the possible stresses allowable stresses that we have to find out then only we, we can go for design and design will be almost similar way as what we have done in case of design of unsupported uh, sorry supported laterally supported beam so we can see that if we see the lateral stability of beams a beam is subjected to bending stresses under applied loads one of the flanges is subjected to compression and other two tensor whatever i was telling that just i am giving in a gist to achieve economy in design the sections are so proportioned that the moment of inertia about the principal axis normal to wave i axis is considerably larger than the moment of inertia about the principal axis parallel to the wave that means generally to make economy we make like this because the buckling means when the section is there so it buckle in this way right about this axis that is why we will try to make this and to make this larger and to make this lesser this width become less and depth of this wave become as high as possible and therefore the chances of buckling occurs you see such a section is weak in bending resistance in the plane normal to the wave therefore the compression flange of the beam tends to buckle this buckling increases with increase in the ratio of moment of inertia about the x x axis to that of y y axis if the compression flange of a beam can be restrained against lateral buckling by any means the allowable bending stress can be utilized to their value so one option to increase the bending stress in compression is to provide some lateral support in the wave so that lateral buckling can be restricted so this is one way to increase the moment carrying capacity of the flexural member by providing lateral support now we will go for design procedure means design procedure for equal flanges i beams or channels for unequal flanges and plate beams that i will come later right so the design of laterally unsupported beams with equal flanges for example i section channel section etc is essentially a matter of trial and error since the section dimensions are not known until a trial section is selected it is therefore necessary to assume a section in order to calculate the stresses the design procedure is as follows so what i am telling here that the section we do not know what is the section dimension we know only say suppose for designing the beam we know only the maximum bending moment now from the maximum bending moment we can find out the section modulus if the sigma bc is known but again sigma bc that is bending stress in compression is unknown because that value depends on the parameters of the section right so for unsupported laterally unsupported beam as we do not know sigma bc which depends on the different parameters of the section so what we will do we have to go for a trial and error method that means 
either we can assume some allowable compression uh, stress in bending the so, sigma bc we can assume some sigma bc which obviously should be less than 165 which is maximum for supported so we will maybe we may consider some reduced value of sigma bc then we can find out the section modulus required section modulus then according to that required section modulus what we will do we will find out the appropriate section and then for that particular section which we have chosen what will be the actual sigma bc permissible stress in compression what will be so that we will find out after finding out that one we can check whether the moment resistance capacity of the selected section is ok or not that means is more than the uh, uh, applied moment or not so in this way we can design an appropriate section so what we are seeing here that it is a trial and error method by trial and error we have to choose a suitable section maybe sometimes we may choose a uh, very conservative section means over conservative we can make in that case again we have to reduce to make it economic and sometimes we may choose little lesser than the actual one so in that case we have to increase that one there is two way to start with one is that reduce the sigma bc value from 165 assume the sigma bc value say maybe 50 percent less than that right otherwise 50 percent or say 20 percent it depends on the experience of the engineers and what type of sections we are going to consider it depends on that otherwise let assume sigma bc as 165 then let us find out the required section modulus then maybe 30 to 50 percent we can increase the section modulus to choose the choose a suitable section from the uh, is handbook so in this way also can be done there is two method finally it will come same so what are the steps for designing the beam with laterally unsupported what are the steps i have just written here so we will go through one by one which is little similar to the design of supported beams laterally supported beams only here difference will be that as we have to go for trial and error so little difference will be there and how to find out sigma bc which is not required to find out in case of laterally supported beam as it is 0.66 fy in case of fy 250 it is 165 so we can directly consider that one but in this case we have to calculate the value properly so in first step what we will do first as we know that loads acting on beam has to calculate what are the loads are acting that has to be calculated remember we have to see if it is imposed load then the dead load or that means the self wipe of the beam has to be also considered in this case as we do not know the section so some appropriate self weight we can assume then on that basis we can choose the section then again we have to check whether the actual section is capable of taking that much load or not in that way we have to do in step 2 we will find out the maximum bending moment and maximum shear force right so because we have to design on the basis of maximum bending moment and maximum shear force so we will calculate those things in step 3 what we will do we will find out section modulus for the beam using the formula that z is equal to m by sigma bc or sigma bt now as we know sigma bc will be what that reduced permissible bending stress in compression which will be less than 165 right so from here first what we will do that we will assume some approximate sigma bc then we can find out z then we can find out the section after that 
for that particular section we can find out what is the actual sigma B C which is given in table 6.1. In table 6.1 several tables are there 6.1 to 1 A to 6.1 F for different conditions is given I am coming. Now, then a suitable section is chosen having section modulus greater than or equal to the calculated modulus of section. In step 5, we will find out the various properties of the selected section and the ratio of T by T and D by T, T is the thickness of flange and small t is the thickness of wave, D is the depth of wave and you know T is the small t is the thickness of wave are calculated and appropriate table for a given type of steel is selected from table 6.1 to 6.8. For different condition the tabular values has been given in table 6.1 A to table 6.1 F to find the permissible bending stress. So, in step 5 we will do all these things and next step what we will do? the permissible bending stress in compression can be find out corresponding to the calculated values of d by t and l by r y ratio. So, the sigma b c is dependent on l by r y and d by t as well as the value of this d by t and t by t. Right. So, on the basis of different parameters, finally, we can find out the allowable bending stress in compression that is sigma b c. Then we can find out the actual moment carrying capacity of the beam. So, in step 7, what we will do? That the permissible bending stress in compression and the moment of resistance of the section is calculated using formula. M r is equal to sigma b c into z, where the moment of resistance is calculated, it should be more than the moment over the section. So, in this way we can find out the moment of resistance which is sigma b c into z, where z is the section modulus. Now, as I told sigma b c can be find out from 6.1 that is this one. You see here one just sample table I have shown which has been taken from IS 81984. This is table 6.1 A, it is written you see maximum permissible bending stress in equal flange I beam or channels. So, this has been calculated as per clause 6.2.2 right and this is calculated for FY is equal to 250 and T by T is greater than 2 and d 1 by t is greater than 85. So, on this condition the value has been calculated. In different table you will see that for t by t may be less than and d 1 by t may be less than 85 and some someone may be greater than someone may be less than like this for different conditions and again for different f y value this sigma bc value has been calculated and for different l by r y ratio and different d by t ratio. Say for d by t is 30 and l by r y is 45, then sigma bc value will become 155. right? And the in between value say in case of l by r y is say 40.5 and say d by t, uh, d by t is say suppose 32 then the in between value has to be calculated. That means, we have to interpolate between these four data, then we have to find out the actual value. So, this interpolate will be done linearly, these are the assumptions have been made. So, the value of sigma b c can be found by the interpo linear interpolation from the tabular data and in table this 6.1 A to 6.1 F all the things have been given means all the possible cases for I section and this channel sections 
has been given equal i say flanged i beam and channels this has been given so simply we can calculate from there and we can give here right next step is step 8 so once we find out a suitable section from bending moment point of view then we can go for checking of shear how do we make check shear as we have done in case of earlier that means we will find out what is the maximum shear then we can find out average shear stress what is developing and the allowable shear stress whether it is less than that or not we have to check and accordingly we have to act right so check for shear using same condition as for laterally supported beams and check for deflection that is also same case deflection we know that has to be less than span by 325 as per the coral provision so for a particular end condition and loading condition we can find out what is the deflection is coming and from the coral provision we can find out what is the maximum allowable deflection span by 325 so if the developed deflection is less than the allowable deflection then this is okay means the selected selected uh, section is okay otherwise we have to change the selected section now we'll go through one workout example the example is will be basis on the design steps whatever we have discussed earlier right so example is like this say design a simply supported beam to carry a UDL of set 24 kilo Newton per meter assuming the beam to be laterally unsupported find a suitable say I am telling I section let us do for I section if the effective span length is 4 meter consider steel used as FY 250 ok so FY value is 250 let us consider so what we are seeing that is simply supported beam having a UDL load that is 24 kilo Newton per meter and having 4 meter length so LE is equal to 4 meter omega is equal to 24 kilo Newton per meter F y equal to 250 Newton per millimeter square right so if I make like this means the cross section it is already told this should be I section right so what we will do this is the question that we are going to use I section first of all we have a UDL load of 24 kilo Newton per meter and a length of 4 meter effective length so in first step what we will do what are the total load so 
when we go for the solution say step 1 we will try to follow the steps which we have discussed earlier in earlier in design procedure we have told step 1 step 2 step 3 like this we have made so for the sake of simplicity same steps i am going to follow one by one then we can have a systematic way to design the whole thing right so in step 1 what it is told that that we have to find out the load acting on the beam so load one is that 24 kilonewton per meter is acting on the beam and we do not know the self weight so but self weight will also come into picture so let us consider say self weight as 0 0.5 kilonewton per meter right so the design load will be this will become 24.5 kilonewton per meter right now we will go for step 2 in step 2 we know we have to find out maximum bending moment and maximum shear force so as it is a simply supported beam having udl load so we know what will be the maximum bending moment that will be w l square by 8 so that will find out maximum bending moment m that will be w l square by 8 and this is basically w so w is 24.5 kilometer per meter l is 4 meter and by 8 so this is coming after calculation as 49 kilonewton meter similarly maximum shear force say v is equal to w l by 2 so w is 24.5 into l is 4 by 2 sorry by 2 so this will become 24.5 into 2 so this is also 49 kilonewton right now we will go for step 3 so we now find out the maximum shear and maximum bending moment which will be required for calculation right say so now we have to find out the section modulus section modulus z so this will be m by sigma bc because we will not consider sigma bt sigma bt is 165 which is in higher side right sigma bc for unsupported length will be less than the sigma bt right so we will assume some sigma bc some reduced value and then we will try we will see whether the assumed sigma bc is ok or not to find out the section appropriate section so let us assume say 165 is the maximum say let us let assume sigma bc the permissible compressive stress in bending say 110 newton per millimeter square therefore the z the section modulus will become m by sigma bc that is 49 kilonewton meter if i make into newton millimeter this will be into 10 to the 6 and sigma bc is uh, we have considered 110 mpa so after calculating we will get this as 445.45 into 10 cube millimeter cube or we can write 445.45 centimeter cube i am converting into centimeter cube because in is code in sp16 sp6 
it is given the section modulus is given in centimeter that is why I am converting to centimeter cube right. Now, so with this value we have to find out an appropriate section. So, in step 4 we will find out the appropriate section right. So, if we go through the handbook SP6 say first we have told that we are going to use I section. So, in I section we will see what is nearby 445 centimeter cube and we have to see that the section whichever we are going to consider is little higher than this 445.45. So, accordingly we will try to find out. So, from that we have seen that we can use say ISMB 300 at 44.2 kg per centimeter kg per meter right. So, we are going to choose this section ISMB 300 at 44.2 kg per meter right. So, in this way we can choose. Now, the moment we are choosing this section we can find out the required properties. Required properties means one is z x x because that is this is basically z means z x x right z x x is 573.6 centimeter cube that means you see required z was 445 and we are providing little high that is 573.6 centimeter cube next i x x will be required for calculation that is 8603.6 centimeter cube. Now, thickness of the flange of the I section is 12.4 millimeter. Similarly, thickness of the wave of the section is 7.5 millimeter, right. Again, overall depth we know as ISMB 300. So, overall depth will be 300 millimeter and H 2 will become 29.25 which is given in the tabular form in the code SP 6. Then R y y radius of gyration about weaker direction that is 28.4 millimeter right. So, these are the required value which will be necessary for calculating the sigma bc value and for other purposes right. So, with this now we can find out other things like d 1 d 1 will be d minus 2 h 2 right. So, d is 300 minus h 2 into h 2. 29.25. So, this value is coming 241.5 millimeter. This is required to find out the sigma bc value for a particular d 1 by t ratio which is given in table 6.1. Okay. So, now in step we will go to step 5. Right. In step 5 what we will do? In step 5, we will find out the different ratio. So, d by t, d by t ratio will become d was overall depth which was given 300 and t was the thickness of the flange, t was the thickness of the flange which is given 12.4. So, 12.4, so this is coming 24.19. Similarly, L by R y y cylinderness ratio of the section that will be L is 400 and R y y is 28.4. R y y is given here, R y y which is given in the code which we have written here 28.4 millimeter. So, this is becoming 140.84. Another thing we require is 
T by T that is thickness of flange to thickness of wave ratio. This is coming 1.65 which is less than 2 because in table when we are going to use we have to see T by T is less than 2 or greater than 2 on the basis of which we will get the value. Similarly, D1 by T, D1 we have calculated here 241.5 by T, T is thickness of wave which is 7.5. So, this ratio is becoming 32.2 which is less than 85, right. So, this is the two condition and FY is 250. So, with these three condition, we can find out which table we have to refer, table 6.1 A or 6.1 B or 6.1 C or D or E or F. Because for different grade of steel and for different condition of T by T and D 1 by T ratio, we have to refer a particular table. And this T by T ratio whether it is less than 2 or greater than 2 d 1 by t ratio is less than 2 or uh, 85 or greater than 85 like this data we have to collect and then we have to select the appropriate table in 6.1 okay? and for this case you will see that the table which will be required is 6.1 b. So, we are going to use table 6.1 b. So, for D by T 24.19 and L by R y 140.84 and F y is 250, we can find out the value of sigma B c, value of sigma B c. So, by interpolation we can finally find out 103.71 MPa. Now, it is not very easy to find out this sigma B c value from table, you have to make interpolation, linear interpolation. So, if you check at your own, when you will do, you see for this ratio and this ratio, you will get sigma B c value as this, right. So, from linear interpolation, you have to find out. Next, we will go to step 7, right. In step 7, what will be calculating? That moment of resistance, moment of resistance, because now we know the section. Now we know the section which have, we have calculated, which we have selected. Then now we know the permissible stress in bending permissible compressive stress in bending sigma B c. Now, we have calculated. So, on that basis we can find out what is the moment resistance capacity of that section. So, moment can be carried out moment of resistance say m r will be sigma B c into z. So, sigma B c is 103.71 and z was find out 573.71. 6, this is centimeter cube. Now, I can make it as millimeter cube. So, if I multiply this value, I will get 59.5 into 10 to the power 6 Newton millimeter or 59.5 kilo Newton meter. So, M R the moment of resistance we are going to get as 59.5 kilo Newton meter. So, this much moment can be carried by the selected section. Now, we have to see what is the actual moment is coming, because now we cannot assume that moment, moment we have calculated earlier 49, right? 49 we have calculated on the basis of that load is 24 and cell poet is 0.5 we have assumed, cell poet we have assumed 
Now, for that particular section, we know the cell point. So, now we will calculate the actual one that what is the actual cell point and then what will be the actual total load and actual moment developing right. So, here actual load will be on beam that will be 1 is 24 point sorry 24 kilometer per meter another is we have used the beam this is ismb 300 at 44.2 kg per meter 44.2 kg per meter that means 44.2 kg per meter that means if i make newton this will be 442 newton per meter that means 0.442 kilo newton per meter so cell point will be 0.442 kilo newton per meter right and load imposed load is 24 kilo newton per meter so actual load will become 24 plus 4.442 means 24.442 kilo newton per meter right so now we can find out the maximum moment right that will be wl square by 8 w is 24.442 into L is 4 by 8. So, this can this is find out 48.884 kilo Newton meter or say I can write 48.9 kilo Newton meter and maximum shear force on the basis we have to design which is actual W L by 2. So, this will become 24.442 into 4 by 2 that is 48.884 kilometer. So, what we are seeing here that moment of resistance is coming here we got 59.5 kilometer meter. 59.5 kilo newton meter and moment developed is 48.9 kilo newton meter right that means moment of resistance is greater than the developed moment so the de design is safe that means from moment point of view the section is okay right so i think you have understood how to find out the appropriate section. Now, you must have understood that if I do not put the trial sigma VC as 110, so suppose I am putting say 130 or 140, then definitely we may have to go for redesign because it may not come properly, right. Because if we put more value, section modulus will be less, and in that case, if section modulus is less, then the we can find out the lesser section and then the sigma VC value will become very less. Okay. So, maybe if the sigma VC value whatever is calculating means whatever coming for a particular section is less than the assumed one, then section will going to fail. So, we have to redesign. Right. So, it is basically a trial and error process through which you can make. Now, if we can develop a software on this, then easily we can find out a economic section, because there we do not need to do all these manual things, right. Just by computer, just by fraction of a second, it can find out the appropriate section. How? What we will do? We will start with a trial section and we will go on checking. We will start with the trial section then we will go on checking that at what 
exact section it is coming perfectly ok not more than that or not less than that. So, by iteration by giving some number of iteration we will means computer will search which section is going to fit for that particular load which section is giving most economic section for that particular load and boundary conditions. So, those things can be find out if one can write a program properly for the design purpose of the beam right. I will show some software which has been developed by my students uh, in conjugative classes. Next what we will do? Next is step 8 that means check for shear right. Check for shear means we know tau v so calculated will be maximum shear was 48.884 and this is kilo newton. So, I am making newton and by d into t w. So, d is 300 and t w is 7.5. So, this is coming 21.73 MPa. Right. So, shear stress developing is 21.73 MPa and it has to be less than 0.4 F y. And this 0.4 Fy means 0.4 into Fy, Fy is 250. So, if I multiply 0.4 into 250, this is becoming 100. So, what we are seeing that tau V cal is less than the permissible one. So, here also it is ok. So, from shear point of view also we can say the section whatever we have chosen for this particular case is perfectly ok. Now, we will go for checking of deflection. So, in step 8, in step 9 we will check for deflection, check for deflection right. So, for check for deflection we have to find out the allowable deflection delta say allowable sorry delta allowable. So, this will be span by 325 span is 4 meter that means 4000 millimeter by 325 and this value is becoming 12.3 millimeter right. So, 12.3 millimeter is coming. So, delta allowable is becoming 12.3 millimeter. Now, what is the developed deflection means delta calculated that will be for this particular boundary condition this will be 5 by 384 into W L to the 4 by E i right because this is a simply supported with UDL. So, for this the coefficient is 5 by 384 as per the quarter provision we know or theoretically we can find out also right. So, if we put the values we can find out all details. So, W was we calculated 24.442 into L is 4 meter that means 4000 millimeter W L to the 4 by E i E is 2 into 10 to the power 5 and i i is given in the code means we have calculated already means we have extracted here from the table i this is 8603.6 centimeter cube. So, that things we will provide here right. So, 8603.6 this is centimeter it was centimeter to the 4. So, we are making millimeter ok to make in same unit. So, if we calculate we are going to get 4.735 millimeter 
this is less than delta allowable which is 12.33 millimeter that means from deflection point of view this is ok so the deflection due to the load is coming 4.735 millimeter and allowable deflection for this particular case is given 12.3 millimeter so from this we can say that this is perfectly ok so i hope now it is clear that how to design a beam with unsupported condition that means laterally unsupported beam how to design is clear of course it is equal flange now for unequal flanges how to design now let us discuss so in clause 6.2.3 it is described that the maximum permissible bending compressive stress in laterally unsupported beam and plate girders can be written as sigma b c is equal to 0.66 into f c b into f y by f c b to the power n plus f y to the power n whole to the power 1 by n right sigma this is given in the clause you can just refer to clause where it is explicitly defined that is in clause 6.2.3 the permissible bending stress in compression is sigma b c which is equal to 0.66 into f c b f y by f c b to the power n plus f y to the power n of whole to the power 1 by n where n has been taken a factor as 1.4 for this case n has been taken as 1.4 and f y as we know yield stress of steel and f c b is the elastic critical stress in bending elastic critical stress in bending now the values of permissible stress calculated from the above formula are given in table 6.2 in table 6.2 we can find out right now what is fcb this is defined in clause 6.2.4 in clause 6.2.4 the fcb has been defined that is fcb is equal to k1 into x plus k2y into c2 by c1 where x is expressed like this that is x is equal to y into root over 1 plus 1 by 20 into L T by R Y D whole square and this will be coming an MPA whereas Y is equal to 26.5 into 10 to the 5 by L by R Y whole square in MPA. So, the value of X and Y are expressed in this equation through which we have to find out and we have to put in this value right now c1 and c2 has been given that is the lesser and greater distance from the section of section neutral axis to the extreme fiber because for unequal cases if we see say suppose particularly those this type of things arises when the built up section is provided say suppose some plate is there right now what will be c1 and what will be c2 so this will be c1 this lesser and then this will be c2 greater distance from the section neutral axis to the extreme fiber c1 sorry extreme fiber and c2 right so c1 c2 is this next k1 because here some factors are given this k1 k2 so what is k1 it is a coefficient to allow for reduction in thickness or breadth of flange between points of effective lateral restraint which depends upon a ratio psi whose value against k1 has been given in table 6.3. So, the value of k1 is given in table 6.3 which depends on value of psi what is psi? psi is the ratio 
of the total area of the flanges at the point of least bending moment to the corresponding area at the point of greatest bending moment between such points of restraint right so all these things in fact is given in the code from which we have taken code means this is 81984 and k2 is a coefficient to allow for the inequality of flanges and depends on omega which is given in table 6.4 of is 800 so it again depends on omega which is given in is 800 in table 6.4 now what is omega omega is a ratio of the moment of inertia of the compression flange alone to that of the sum of the moment of inertia of both the flanges each calculated about its own axis parallel to yy axis of the girder at the point of maximum bending moment values of x and y are given in table 6.5 for appropriate values of d by t and l by r y right in fact so values of x and y can be find out from table 6.5 either from this equation we can find out or simply from table 6.5 also we can find out now iy and iox we know iy is the moment of inertia of the whole section about the axis lying in the plane of bending and similarly ix is the moment of inertia of the whole section about the axis normal to the plane of the bending so ix and iy as we know right now as i was telling you that in table it is given like in table 6.3 values of k1 for beams with cutter flanges has been given so for different psi you can find out values of k1 and similarly for different omega you can find out the values of k2 so values of k2 for beams with unequal flanges so from this we can find out values of k1 and k2 from table 6.3 and 6.4 and in table 6.5 directly we can find out value of ax and y with the values of d by t and l by r y otherwise those who are going to develop the software develop the programming they have to use the equations because we cannot use the table table is huge best way is to use the equation from which we will get directly whatever in the code in tabular form is given can be found out directly from the equations and if we are going to use through programming we do not have to do anything so complication of the calculation can be avoided which has to do manually can be avoided through that computer program right and as earlier we are doing in manually so code has helped us code has reduced our work through giving the data in terms of tabular form which has been extracted from the equation those complicated equations so in this way we can find out the sigma bc value that is sigma bc is nothing but the allowable bending stress in compression in case of unequal flanges we can find out the permissible stress in bending in compression and then other processes exactly same whatever we have done in case of equal flanges so in next class we will discuss about the unequal flanges then we will see how to solve a problem right and today as time is short so now i like to conclude today's lecture thank you very much